Hello and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Kimberly Acosta. Many of the stories viewed here can also be found at our websites, IndianCountryNews.com or IndianCountryTV.com. Here is the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Well-known photographer Ben Mara has released his second book, Faces from the Land, 20 Years of Powwow Tradition. Hitting the stores this month, Faces from the Land, by ben, ben and Linda Mara reveals dancers from many tribes and nations. Since 1988, Ben Mara and his wife Linda have crisscrossed the nation to document the majestic dance regalia worn at Native American powwows. Mara invites participants into his improvised studio to be photographed in full traditional dress, while his wife Linda records the stories behind their regalia. Faces from the Land showcases the determination of a new generation of Native Americans to keep dancing tradition alive. Ben and Linda Mara are a husband and wife team who began to document powwows in 1988. The Mara's ongoing photograph project includes a traveling ex exhibition for museums, two year yearly calendar titles, fine art photographs, and lithographic prints. For more information on Ben and Linda Mara's work, you can visit their website at benmara.com. The Bonneville Power Administration has presented, a, <clears throat> has presented Tribal Council Chairman Ron Supa of the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs with one of the agency's highest honors as part of the BPA's Excellence Awards Program. Chairman Supa received the Ex Exceptional Public Service Award for his leadership and support during the development of the Columbia Basin Fish Accords. In presenting the award, BPA Administrator Steve Wright said that Supa motivated all parties to come together around a common plan that would put fish on a path to recovery. The landmark accords evolved from Supa's vision of the federal tribal partnership that would restore salmon to the Columbia River Basin. The BPA and the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs, along with four other tribes in two states and two other federal agencies, signed the accords in 2008. The result, said Wright, is the historic agreements that involve dollars and resources toward the on-the-ground on projects such as habitat improvements that will directly benefit fish. As a result of the accords, BPA will provide $933 million of guaranteed funding over 10 years for these projects. The teen movie sensation Twilight has recently gotten noticed not just from mainstream teams, but it has also caught the eye of many young native teams from around the nation. The Quiet Reservation is only about one square mile in size and is located about 12 miles from the fishing resort town of La Push, Washington. With Quiet tribal lineage dating back thousands of years to the Ice Age, this makes them possibly the oldest inhabitants of the Pacific Northwest. According to their tribal legends, the Quiets were created from wolves by Supernatural Transformer. Ranked second to their tribal neighbors, the Maka tribe, as whalers, the Quiets are ranked first as sealers from the Chikuma, who were separated, who they were separated from by the great flood that swept them to the Quamper Peninsula. They were almost entirely wiped out by Chief Seattle and the Suquamish tribe in the 1860s. The modern day community of La Push is the setting for Twilight, which is based on a series of books written by Stephanie Meyer about a young woman named Isabella Swan and her dark brooding teen vampire boyfriend Edward Cullen. The now much hyped movie has recently been released on DVD and with a much anticipated new moon movie to be released later this spring you can be sure that the tribal teen entertainment interest in the series will only continue to grow. American Indian plaintiffs in a class action lawsuit against the Agriculture Department says that the government's own data shows that the American Indian farmers lost hundreds of millions of dollars as a result of loan discrimination at the agency. The dollar amount was developed by an economist hired as an expert witness in the case. The lawsuit, would, the lawsuit which could go to tri trial later this year, was filed in 1999 by Indian farmers and ranchers who say USDA officers tried to squeeze them out of business by denying them loans and that instead went to non-Indians. Brandon Minnelli, director of Network Forensics of Lightstone Solutions, has earned certification from Guidance Software as an NK certified examiner, which is recognized by law enforcement and corporate entities as showing that an investigator is a skilled computer examiner. Few computer forensics investigators complete this rigorous certification process. In fact, only 850 people worldwide. Lightstone assists tribes and others in conducting internal investigations 
where computers are involved and testify as experts in court. They also specialize in gaming regulatory consulting and work with tribes to set up gaming commissions and perform background licensing checks for employees and vendors. This is a proud moment for Benelli and Lightstone Solutions, with Benelli becoming the first Native American and the first member of the Navajo Nation to earn this prestigious certificate. In times of rising energy costs, the Oneida Tribe of Wisconsin has begun to explore the idea of a four-day work week for their non-revenue generating tribal departments. A team was set up to explore the possible saving a four-day work week would generate for the tribe. The state of Utah started in August 2008 with state workers and were saving millions of dollars according to their estimates, Oneida team spokesman Chad Wilson said. The Potawatomi tribe also switched to a four-day work week in August 2008 and had a lot more savings than they projected with a lot of employee satisfaction. The Oneida research team has been compiling data on the tribe's energy usage, surveying supervisors, and holding community meetings to gather employee and community members' opinions. According to the group's research, there is an overwhelming support for the shortened work week with the emphasis on increased employee morale. Though there is an overwhelming support, there are some drawbacks that the group were able to identify, which include child care schedules and the strain of a 10-hour shift. The group will be presenting to the joint executive team for a decision to pass the proposal along to the Oneida Business Committee for final approval. A target date of June 1st has been set for implementation if the plan is approved. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of Native News Update. We'd like to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you and have a grand day.